Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to The Gamer Couple. My name's Sam and I'll be your host for today's video. In today's video, we're going to be showing you guys five mistakes you're probably making in Fortnite Battle Royale. Of course, this doesn't apply to every single person out there, but from the majority of streams we see in the videos from our own subscribers, we've highlighted five mistakes a lot of players are making. Hopefully you can learn something new from this video, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Coming in at number 5, we have cover building. Now a lot of players in Fortnite are actually getting quite good at building and can make efficient forts and use materials for great mobility. But what we don't see a lot of is fast and effective cover building. Most of the time when a player is under fire, they will start by building ramps. This is actually a mistake. Instead you want to start with a wall then a ramp behind it. An experienced player will always try to burn through your ramp as soon as you put it up, so putting a wall then a ramp gives you double structures and more time to assess the situation. You can even take this a step further by making what I call a zigzag. This is when you put a wall then a ramp, followed by another wall then a ramp, and so on. This makes the enemy burn lots of ammo, and if you do this fast enough, they can't destroy it as fast as you put it up. This gives you great cover, time to assess the situation, and even heal if need be. Before we move on to number 4, we wanted to show you guys two more fast builds for great cover. The first is if you're being sniped or shot at from a direction that is unknown. Quickly build four walls around you and a ramp in the middle. This is a classic, but one that we don't see getting used enough. The next build is a distraction build. This is when you put walls and ramps everywhere, confusing your enemy. This makes them burn tons of grenades and tons of ammo. Keep taking shots from different angles so they can't predict exactly where you are, and this strategy works surprisingly well. In return, you have to burn lots of materials to do this. Coming in at number 4, we have players that have no game plan or loot routes. Most players in Fortnite just jump out at the first town and hope for the best. This is a huge waste of time and even the best Fortnite players struggle in doing this. The RNG in this game is so strong that it's purely luck in the beginning towns. Instead you want to jump to a less populated loot route. These still usually have a few players landing at them, but there is much more skill involved instead of luck. A good example of this is Flush Factory. Usually when the battle bus goes above this area, I go here instead of Greasy Grove. There is a ton of chest spawns here and usually only 4-7 to seven people. If you get to know this area well, you will easily clean them up and have an amazing setup for the rest of your game. Another good loot route is the house behind Wailing Woods. This house has a triple chest spawn, right next to it there's a double chest spawn at the ice cream truck, and right next to that there's also two houses, totaling 10 chest spawns within a minute of each other. Usually 4-7 to seven people land here, giving me a 3-5 to five kill start, along with full shields and great weapons. Find yourself some good loot routes around the map. Get to know them well and you will have a major advantage in the game and just as many kills as if you landed in the starter town. Coming in at number 3 we have people not knowing what type of player they are. In Fortnite there are 3 main types of players. You have the aggressive one who never stops moving and tries to take every fight. You have the defensive one who only takes fights if they have the advantage. And then you have the camper. Let me just start by saying this, there's nothing wrong with being a camper, but if you choose this style you will improve much slower at this game than others. Campers usually take less fights, have less ammo and resources, and sure, they can win games, get kills, but if you're not challenging yourself, you aren't going to be improving at this game as much as you'd like to be. Also, nothing feels worse than camping for 15 minutes and dying to someone better than you. Ultimately, you want to find out if you're an aggressive player or a defensive one. This way you can clearly see what you need to work on. If you're defensive, a surprise shotgun battle most likely isn't going to go in your favor. If you're aggressive and someone has positional advantage on you from a medium range, it's definitely going to be a hard fight. Once you find your weaknesses, you can work on them consistently and find a perfect balance between aggressive and defensive playstyles. This will make you a very well-rounded Fortnite player, giving you a much higher chance of winning games. Coming in at number 2, we have bad aim tracking. This one seems like it's a hard thing to fix, but there's actually two very easy solutions. A lot of people tell me that they have great aim in other games, but not in Fortnite. This is most likely because your sensitivity doesn't match the other games you play. If you have great aim in Call of Duty and completely different sensitivity in Fortnite, of course your aim is going to feel off. The best thing to do is swap between two games until you get your sense as close as possible. Making your sensitivity close to the same across every game will make all shooters feel natural, including new ones. If your sensitivity is already good and you still feel like your aim is bad, all you have to do is do some tracking drills. Start by putting your crosshair on one target and then moving left to right. Once you get comfortable doing this, now try placing your crosshair on a moving target. I always do this in the pre-game lobby and practice my tracking before every game. You can also go a step further and go into a duos game and go to the edge of the map. Here you can practice tracking with a friend, and if you practice tracking drills every single day, you will get really good at aiming really fast. 
Finally coming in at number 1 we have bad game awareness and positioning. A lot of players in Fortnite just run in the middle of the map never checking their surroundings and never taking advantageous positions. I want to list a bunch of tips here to help you guys become more aware of your surroundings and the right positions to take. First as you're running look left to right. This doesn't slow you down but gives you way more LOS. While doing this add a jump now and look behind you as well. In close quarters combat, make sure you have a headset and turn the volume up real loud. Most players don't play with enough sound, and if you're listening, you're going to win almost every close 1v1 encounter. Always take the high ground. Whether it's building your own high ground, playing on hills, roofs, and towns, the high ground makes you harder to hit and makes the enemy easier to hit. Also allows some really easy headshots. Always check for open doors. If a door is open, that means someone has been there or someone is there. Always approach these situations with caution. Use things around you for natural cover. Knowing how to peek corners and head glitching gives you a major advantage in fights. Last but not least, always be on your toes. Fortnite is a game that is very hard to play casually, and always being ready for a fight will give you a huge advantage over casual players. Anyway guys, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below. If you are brand new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with our latest videos. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.